Member Statements. The member for Windsor Tecumseh. Uh, thank you, Speaker, and uh, truly a privilege to rise. Uh, in celebration of the Registered Nurses Association of Ontario Windsor Essex Chapter Lois Fairley Nursing Award, it holds a special significance in Windsor and Essex County, honouring nurses who embody the values of compassion, professionalism, and dedication to patient care. And so I celebrate this year's recipient of the 2024 RNAO Lois Fairley Nursing Award, Anna Dudock. Her remarkable legacy of service to our community is truly deserving of this award. Anna's dedication and impact as a nurse at Huron Lodge in Windsor since 1991 has not only earned her this prestigious honour, but has also left an indelible mark on the lives of countless patients and their families. Her unwavering commitment to resident-centred care, her vast knowledge honed over years of service, and her compassionate approach to every interaction exemplifies the epitome of nursing excellence. Anna's willingness to go above and beyond from advocating for her residents' needs to providing comfort and support during challenging times embodies the true spirit of nursing. And Anna's influence extends far beyond her immediate surroundings. Her dedication to mentoring and guiding new hires ensures that her legacy of compassionate care will continue to thrive at Huron Lodge for years to come. To Anna, thank you for your tireless dedication and for exemplifying the very best of nursing. Your lives, the lives of you impacted for, and all those that you care about, it's immeasurable, and your legacy will continue to inspire us all. Member Statements, the member for Parkdale High Park. Speaker, I hold an annual member statement writing competition for high school students in my riding. Students are welcome to submit a statement on any issue they feel passionate about. It's designed to empower young people and foster youth participation in politics by bringing their voice directly to Queen's Park and speaking to issues in their own words. The winner for 2024, as selected by an independent committee, is Shivani Sarabhanan from Humberside Collegiate. Here is Shivani's statement. Food prices are rapidly increasing in Toronto, and many residents are unable to afford healthy, nutritious foods and have become dependent on food banks. In the past year, three additional food banks have opened in Toronto to meet the city's rapidly growing demand, which has increased approximately by one million visits. Food banks are playing an essential role by assisting those who are unable to afford essentials due to price inflation. While food banks provide necessities, they do not solve the fact that many residents will not be able to afford food should prices continue to rise. They are only a temporary solution that disguises the true issue causing the situation. Many families struggle to make ends meet as housing prices and interest rates have inflated at a higher rate than salaries. With rising food prices, residents are having to sacrifice nutritious groceries for processed foods as they are more affordable. At the forefront of this crisis comes human health. Thank you, Shivani. Congratulations. Thank you very much. Member Statements. The member for Perth Wellington. Thank you, Speaker. It is a pleasure to rise today to share with this House some important investments our government has made in my riding of Perth Wellington. Last week, I was joined by the Minister of Education to announce a brand new Catholic elementary school in Drayton, Ontario. This represents $17.3 million in investment by our government in our rural education system and will create 222 new student spaces and 64 new childcare spe spaces. Speaker, this is a huge investment for Drayton and area because for too long, local families did not have any affordable childcare options locally. But our government is delivering for rural Ontario after years of inaction from the previous Liberal government. Speaker, the good news doesn't stop there. I also had the pleasure to announce that our government is funding a major expansion of St. Mary's Catholic School in Listowel. This investment of $5.8 million will help build an additional 150 student spaces and 98 childcare spaces. 
These two projects are part of our larger $1.3 billion plan to more, that more than doubles the funding to build new schools and expands childcare spaces across Ontario. Since 2018, our provincial government has invested over $34 million in communities across Perth Wellington to build 250 new childcare spaces and 470 new student spaces. Speaker. While the previous Liberal government closed 600 rural schools, our government will continue to invest in rural Ontario. Thank you. Sir. Thank you. Member statements. The member for Waterloo. Thank you, Speaker. When it comes to accessing housing financing, some Muslim Canadians are facing significant barriers because traditional financing restricts some from entering the housing market. Under Islamic law, paying and receiving interest is prohibited. Halal financing offers an alternative to interest-based mortgages. There is an overwhelming demand from the, for these products, with over 12,000 families on a wait list. Financially, this amounts to $6 billion of financing, growing by $100 million per month. It is worth noting that Canada is the only G7 country that does not accommodate halal mortgages. We have fallen behind, foregoing billions of dollars in the process. However, the 2024 federal budget indicated that the government would be exploring halal mortgages. Speaker, it is important that Ontario is prepared to respond to this change. The Muslim population is being excluded from the housing market simply because they cannot access services that align with their religious beliefs. This is a missed financial opportunity for Ontario and another barrier to housing. Halal financing opens up mortgage options for thousands of Ontarians and millions of Canadians. By extent, it also offers a solution to the housing crisis, and everyone benefits from this. The question remains, when will Ontario provide access to, to home ownership for the underserviced Islamic community? We are prepared to work with this, the community to ensure that housing is a possibility for every Ontarian. Thank you very much. The member for Lanark, Frontenac, Kingston. Thank you, Speaker. Mr. Speaker, before the House rises for the summer, I'd like to acknowledge all my fellow MPPs for your continued dedication to your constituents and connecting with them over the summer months. I'd also like to invite you to my riding of Lanark, Frontenac, Kingston. Experience one of our festivals, like the world-renowned Stuart Park Festival in Perth or the Blue Skies Music Festival in, Lan in Clarendon. Both receive funding through the Experience Ontario Grant. My thanks to Minister Lumsden and the Ministry of Tourism, Culture and Sport. We have beautiful museum, museums, including the Heritage House Museum in Smith Falls, which I had the pleasure of attending on Saturday. It received funding from this government to set up an exhibit to celebrate the 60th anniversary of the pressing of Beatles records in the RCA building in Smith Falls, where my constituency office is located today. Smith Falls was the birthplace of Beatles records in North America, with the RCA building employing hundreds of people, 75% of which were women. Some of you may remember the Ed Sullivan Show back in 64, and, uh, well, <laughs> some of you may remember. Mr. Speaker, these investments from the province will encourage Ontarians to explore all that our communities have to offer, staying in local accommodations, eating in restaurants, and supporting small businesses. Tourism makes significant contributions to Ontario's economy, supporting approximately 360,000 jobs and generating over $33 billion of economic activity. Mr. Speaker, I wish everyone a safe, happy and healthy summer. And if you're thinking about a day trip or multi-day adventure, I encourage you to visit Lanark Frontenac Kingston. Thank you, Speaker. Thank you very much. Thank you. Member Statements, the member for Oshawa. Thank you, Speaker. June is Pride Month. Today we are joined at Queen's Park by Paul and Sherry Weaver, who live in Oshawa and whose proud daughter Erin wrote to tell me have a beautiful flagpole in their beautiful garden where they proudly fly both the Canadian flag and the Pride flag. Erin wrote that they have had strangers reach out to them about how important it has been for them to see the Pride flag flying in their neighbourhood. One instance in particular was that a teenage boy knocked on their door and shared that seeing their pride flag flying as he walked by each day made him feel safe and seen and that it was just so important to him. Last year, Paul and Sherry's pride flag was stolen, ripped and cut from the flagpole and taken. Paul replaced the flag. Unfortunately, on the long weekend, the entire flagpole was stolen, flags and all. Speaker, 
Across communities, there are ugly and hate-motivated harms happening to our friends, families, and neighbors in the 2SLGBTQIA community. But there are moments of magic and acts of kindness, and I am glad to share the rest of the story today. A man who lives not too far from Paul and Sherry saw a flagpole lying hidden near his fence, and the flagpole was returned with the flags. Paul has been able to get it back up and flying proudly. As their daughter shared with me, quote, my parents will never let the misguided energy of others prevent them from contributing to the creation of safe spaces and communities." End quote. Oshawa is a community made up of great neighbours, but there is still work to be done to ensure that everyone feels welcome. Thank you, Paul and Sherry, for joining us here today at Queen's Park and for choosing to be wonderful neighbours. Flying the pride flag is a message to your neighbourhood that everyone belongs. And to everyone in Oshawa, happy pride. Member statements. The member for Burlington. Good morning, Speaker, and thank you. Last weekend, I had the pleasure of attending a community event at Desi Mandy, a South Asian supermarket located in my riding, to celebrate their third anniversary of doing business in Burlington. I met with the owners, Raj and Sarah, a lovely couple who opened their store during the pandemic. With the support of the community, they've grown their grocery store into a thriving business that sells thousands of different Asian offerings. Whether you're looking for fresh fruits, vegetables, dairy products, as well as favorites like rice, flour, spices, pickles, or frozen food, Desi Mandy has what you need. They also have a butcher shop located, along with a hot food table offering delicious South Asian meals. And if you don't find what you're looking for, Raj and Sarah will bring it in to serve you better. Desi Mandy also supports local initiatives in the Burlington community, donating to food to organizations across our community, including um, charities such as the Compassion Society, Food for Life, and religious organizations that provide hot meals for people who are going without. Proceeds raised at their event were donated to the local Joseph Brandt Hospital, Congratulations once again to Raj and Sarah on the third anniversary of Desi Mandi, and I look forward to visiting again soon. Thank you very much. Member Statements. The member for Beaches, East York. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, and good morning, everyone. Today, I am so proud to speak about a dynamic resident of beautiful Beaches, East York, named Marvelous Marianne Neary. It is very fitting to speak about this wonderful woman on Bike to Work Day because of her strong advocacy to keep people safe in this city and beyond. Mary Ann believes streets were for everyone, for pedestrians, for transit riders, for cars, and for cyclists. I first met Mary Ann at one of our monthly Ward 32 spokes cycling meetings in the famous Feathers Pub at Kingston Road. We were a motley crew with half-baked ideas and endless energy. And I'm actually not sure why this meticulously organized and detailed individual did not turn on her heel the moment she spied us. But from then on, she was our true leader, whipping us into shape with strategic plans, community outreach, and educational events. We never looked back. Whether it was door knocking, speaking at City Hall, or organizing bike tune-ups at East Lynn Park, Mary Ann was there helping, under helping people understand the benefits of cycling, especially health advantages. After all, she was a legend in the healthcare sector, wowing everyone at the University Health Network with her tremendous skills in speech pathology and later as Senior Clinical Director of Surgical Services. Marianne loved helping people and never stopped giving back to society. Marianne passed away unexpectedly but peacefully in her sleep on May 12, 2024, a big loss for Ontario. Rest in peace, lovely Marianne. Thank you very much. Member statements. The member for Richmond Hill. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Today I rise to commemorate the 80th anniversary of D-Day, a pivotal moment in our history that took place on June 6 today, but it is on 1944. On this day, brave soldiers from Canada and the Allies stormed the beaches of Normandy, marking the beginning of the end of World War II. 
We remember the immense courage and sacrifice of those who participated in Operation Overlord. Among them were thousands of Canadians who played a critical role in securing freedoms we enjoy today. In Richmond Hill, we honor members of the local legion, Bill Rennick, who served with the 1st Canadian Parachute Battalion, and Angus MacDonald of the Royal Canadian Ordnance Corps, who both landed on June 6, 1944. We also remember Bill Aird of the 48th Royal Marine Commandos, who was attached to the 3rd Canadian Division at Juneau Beach. I also remember my father-in-law, Mr. Casey White, for his contribution in the Second World War. Mr. Speaker, on this solemn anniversary, let us commit to never forgetting the valor of the D-Day soldiers. Let us ensure that the stories are told, that sacrifices are remembered, that legacy is preserved for future generations. Thank you. Thank you very much. Member statements. The member for Lambton, Kent, Middlesex. Thank you, Speaker. Ladies and gentlemen, as we eagerly approach the vibrant summer season, I am thrilled to highlight the array of exciting events taking place in our beloved riding. From cultural festivals to community gatherings, there is something for everyone to enjoy. Picture the roar of the engines at the Pan Pancor tractor pull, the savory aroma of barbecue at Strathroy Rib Fest, the vintage cars at the Bothell Car Show, and the Wallaceburg Wambo. There are plenty of Ontario-style events for every community across Lambton, Kent, Middlesex. From Luke and Summerfest, Temsel's Thrashing Festival, to the historic significance of the Emancipation Day in Dresden, as well as the bustling night market. These events are not just about entertainment, they're a celebration of our communities and traditions. Furthermore, these events serve as a testament to the resilience and vitality of our community. By supporting local initiatives, we bolster our economy and foster a sense of pride in our shared identity. Let's not just attend, let's actively participate, volunteer, and support these events. As your representative, I am committed to promoting and enhancing the quality of life in our riding. Together, let's make this summer one to remember, filled with joy, laughter, and a deep appreciation for all that our community has to offer. Thank you for your continued support, and I look forward to seeing you at these upcoming events. Thank you, Speaker. Thank you very much.